Salam. Why Muslims do not take accusation of pedophilia about Prophet Muhammad a serious issue? First of all, there are two opinions about marriage age of Aisha. The more possible one is nine years old while the Prophet was fifty-five years old. Let's look at ancient documents to decide whether the Prophet had young lady syndrome or pedophilia. Because one evidence may not be enough for right decision. For example, let's assume, 12 years old Mary married with 80 or 90 years old Joseph the carpenter. It seems just protection, not sexual desire of the couple. Let's assume, Prophet Isaac married with Rebecca while she was three and a half years old. Is Prophet Isaac pedophile? To decide, you ask question and investigate the situation. Did the Prophet choose her? No. So you try to find meaningful reason for this abnormal behavior. Actually when you investigate deeply, marriage of Prophet Isaac with child Rebecca seems as a necessity rather than a choice. Why? Because there was not any monotheist girl around Prophet Isaac for Mary. Also Rebecca's society was idolater. But since child character and faith starts at the age of four, Rebecca was neither idolater nor adulteress, clean heart and brain. There is no customs for her to carry them to the Prophet's house. If you look at from this perspective, you only see wisdom not sexual desire. But if you have prejudgment about the subject, you cannot see the dolphins. Let's return our main topic. Aisha married with Prophet Muhammad at six or seven years old. And she becomes household while she was nine years old. So is the Prophet a pedophile? The term of pedophilia was used late 19th century. And it is classified as illness. Cure is impossible or very rare even with strong medicine. Illness defined as seeing children, boy or girl, below 11 years old as sexually attractive. Main aim of pedophilic is not intercourse rather involve inappropriate touching or manipulating the child. It is better to look to profit life, instead of looking if he is left or right-handed, tall or small. We will use common ancient narratives about the Prophet life especially his marriages. As you see from the table, the first marriage of the Prophet was with Khadija. He was 25 while Khadija was 40 years old. During this period the Prophet lived with her alone. Even Khadija, his wife said to the Prophet that he could marry again, the Prophet did not let him speak about second wife. Khadija died while the Prophet 50 years old. After that Prophet married with eleven wives. All the age, except Maria Coptic is put on the table. When you take the average marriage age of the women, you will find forty. While the Prophet age average is fifty-five. If Prophet has an illness as young ladies syndrome or like pedophilia, average marriage age of women should be much less than that. If we eliminate the youngest and the eldest marriage age of woman, we found thirty-seven as average. You could find it different. Because I actually did not eliminate the youngest one. Why? Because we do not know the age of Maria Coptic. It is recorded as very young. How young is very young? I am assuming her age just reached puberty when she married with Prophet. So I did not eliminate nine, because I took Maria's age also nine years old. You can say that here is another possibility showing tendency of child attraction. Actually it is opposite. As much as you decrease age of Maria Coptic, as much as reducing possibility of pedophilia. How? Let's read story of Maria Coptic from Tabari. It is written around 900 common era. Tabari recounts the story of Maria's arrival from Egypt. In this year Hatib bin Abi Balta'a came back from al Makaki's bringing Maria and her sister Shrin, his female mule Duldul, his donkey Yafur and sets of garments. With the two women al Mukakis had sent a eunuch, and the latter stayed with them. Haytib had invited them to become Muslims before he arrived with them, and Maria and her sister did so. The Messenger of God, peace, and blessings of Allah be upon him, lodged them with Umm Salam binti Milhan. Maria was beautiful. The Prophet sent her sister Shrin to Hassan bin Thabit and she bore him Abd al-Ram bin Hassan. So, if we assume, Maria Coptic is nine years old, her sister Shireen is at least one year younger than her. 
If Shrin eight years old and the prophet did not select Shirin as wife, then the prophet do not showing the symptoms of pedophilia or idea of younger is better. Another important issue is that the prophet did not directly choose her. She was a present from a governor. The prophet decision was choosing the older instead of younger. If he was pedophile, this must be opposite. Why Shirin had been given to someone else? Because marrying with two sisters at the same time is forbidden by Islam. Maria Coptic and her sister were teenagers but their age did not record it in ancient texts. How do we know she was teenager? Because, Maria Coptic was became pregnant in a year. Let's go back to story of Aisha to understand what happened and why happened. After death of Khadija, wife of the Prophet, some of Prophet's female relatives advise him to marry. One of the wives, advice to Prophet was Aisha. So no matter her age, it was legitimate according their moral norms. It is said that when the Prophet asked Aisha from his father as a wife, her father hesitated about this marriage. In the ancient documents, one of the reasons is mentioned as, Aisha is already engaged with a man. His name is Jubair, his father is Mutim ibn Adi. If this is the case, marriage agreement could be done with even younger than six years old child in this society. So this action was lawful according to their norms. Aisha's father, Abu Bekir was best friend of the Prophet. The Prophet was trying to convey the message. They were in Mecca. Muslims having difficult times, and one of the biggest supporter was Abu Bekir. He also had known as man of honor in his tribe. If this was something bad, why the Prophet asked his daughter from Abu Bekir? Even they made marriage agreement, Aisha lived three years with her parents. So why did not the Prophet wait until puberty of Aisha? It is said that, Jubair's mother thought that Abu Bekir and his wife become Muslim and they were under persecution. So if she brings Aisha to her household, Aisha, or her father, could make his son also Muslim. This means bad luck for her family. So Jubair's family was planning the broke the marriage agreement. This action was taking place at the same time. When the Prophet asked Aisha from Abu Bekir, Abu Bekir having a problem because he promised Aisha to someone else. Actually someone else was breaking the marriage which is a shame for Abu Bekir. My understanding, God is solving Abu Bekir's problem while nobody knows it. So when Jubair's family broke the agreement, most probably Abu Bekir thanked to God. Let's come to the time which Aisha became household of the Prophet. In our resources it is said that, Abu Bekir, father of Aisha asked to the Prophet that why are you waiting to take Aisha? The Prophet said him that he could not finance it now. Abu Bekir, provided the money. The Prophet only accepted it as debt. So in some ancient text, Aisha's father asked marriage but there is none showing the Prophet asked to fulfill the marriage. Marriage is not secretly made. So parents, also peoples around the Prophet know that the Prophet take nine years old Aisha to his household. Nobody made a rumor about this subject. Which means this kind of marriage is common, normal, and legitimate according to their customs and ethics. Also there is not any evidence showing the Prophet made sex with Aisha while she was nine years old. What is known? Aisha became member of the Prophet household as second wife. The other Prophet wife was 55 years old Sada. Also the Prophet's daughter Fatima has been mentioned as 10 years old in Shia resources when married with Ali. Fatima marriage agreement and marriage was made in a few months gap while Aisha marriage contract and marriage was made in three years gap. Teen marriage is bad, because it destroy girl's life. No education, no security, violence from husband, no career etc. In fact those problems, education, violence, career etc., could be possible problems for girls in general. Because no regulation is established for solution. But even these problems are not valid for Aisha, wife of the Prophet. She is the biggest woman who has effect on Islamic history. She narrated Divine Hand in her marriage. When you look at her life, it is obvious that this marriage has God wisdom. If Aisha was not a part of the Prophet family, we will have much problem about our faith now.
By means of Aisha a Sharia law is established in the Quran which is, adulterer or adulteress only be judge with four eyes whiteness. This is nearly impossible to achieve or at least difficult than Jewish law. According to Jewish law, the testimony of two or three witnesses is needed. But one witness is enough for a woman to be killed. Story of Jesus and the woman taken in adultery does not contain male adulterer. If there was only one witness about the adultery then male criminal could not be judge. Maybe this was the reason for one criminal instead of two in the story. And this also could be one of the reasons that Jesus did not judge her according to one witness. We moved from our subject again. Let's turn back. Aisha narrated many hadith and affected many traditions. But much important than this, she clarified some of the hadith which is authentic but wrong understood. In one incident, her father asks her, thank to the Prophet, but she refused and she declares that she will only thanks to God which needs strong character for her time. Aisha's childhood was not seen bad when you think that, she was refugee in the beginning of 7th century and had dolls. She also expresses herself as luckiest woman in her time and she was proud of her marriage. I think, during the marriage, husband Muhammad was in advance from Prophet Muhammad for Aisha. The Prophet was illiterate. Aisha was literate, scholar about Quran, no poet, history of Arabs. It is said that even scholars asked from Aisha about law of succession which also needs math. She was much inside politics, maybe too much. Because of that she joined the war against Ali. When she realized her mistake, she turned to science. When peoples try to pass a law or produce a thought that women are lower or evil, she refused their ideas and show examples from the life or saying of the Prophet. She made this service fifty years after the Prophet. You can say that if Aisha was like others Prophet wives, Islam will have more masculine aspect in their tradition. Aisha's marriage has wisdom in the Prophet time and much more wisdom after the Prophet. So we thanks to God for that he made Aisha one of the Prophet wife and increase our understanding of Islam by her. For girls, pre-teenage marriage was a norm in the world until 20th century. Pre-puberty marriages were also common in Abrahamic faith until Islam. After Islam, minimum marriage age increased to the puberty and also confirmation of the couples are asked. A century ago, seculars pushed the marriage age to minimum 18 years old. Do you think, they made something useful for society? You think, but numbers showing opposite. Who's 12 years old? Baby, my room is the G spot. Call me Mr. Flintstone. I can make your bed rock. Important warning. When the Third Temple builds, in a few decades, leave cities and climb to big solid mountains. I am estimating giga earthquakes around the world. Vassalam.